Good morning. morning. On this beautiful fall morning. Just a few announcements to start off. I'll remind you, uh, this will be the last time uh, uh, Lucille and the directory, if you can update any uh, address or names or anything for the directory. And if you're interested in going to the Sunday School Convention with uh, Lorraine on November 5th, at, uh, at Newville, so please see Lorraine on that. Remind you again about All Saints Day, getting your names in uh, to me on that for November 6th. We will have Bible study this week. Um, people left last week without getting their newest assignment, so I forgot to say that. It, read to page 88. Read to page 88 on, for the Bible study. Uh, there will be a new Bible study, a morning study, forming on November, November 9th. Um, November 9th, new Bible, morning Bible study forming. Please sign up or let me know by October 31. That's Monday a week uh, so that I can order books. And that Bible study will take place from 10 to 11.15 in the morning on Wednesdays begin on, beginning on November 9th. Don't forget Charge Conference November 1st at First United Methodist and uh, St. Paul's, the Chambersburg Circuit and First United Methodist will be going together that evening. And just a reminder that um, uh, GTI offering um, either this week or next Sunday, one or the other, but please get the money in for the GTI India offerings on that. And what a good mission that is uh, for the church. Are there any other announcements this morning? Pastor Appreciation Month. Well, thank you. I don't know what that take you out means. Okay, all right. Yeah, yeah. I had kids for years that wanted to take me out. So okay. So and, I understand. Oh, thank you, thank you. And Joyce and I do love serving this charge, the Chambersburg Circuit. So thank you. <laughs> anyway, all right. Let us begin with the morning prelude. <laughs>
A mighty fortress is our God. Thank you, Lorraine. Please rise if you are able for the call to worship this morning. Praise awaits you, our God, in Zion. To you our vows will be fulfilled. Blessed are those who choose and bring near to live in your courts. We are filled with the good, thing, good tidings of your house, of your holy temple. who still the roaring of the seas, the roaring of their waves, and the turmoil of the nations. You care, care for the land and water it. You enrich it abundantly. The streams of God are filled with water to provide the people with grain, for so you have ordained it. The grasslands of the wilderness overflow. The hills are clothed with gladness. Let us sing the chorus freely, freely. Let us pray. Dear kind Heavenly Father, we thank you for this new autumn day and all the blessings and protection of this past week. Thank you for this beautiful fall season we are having. And thank you for all of your abundance that you share with us. We give our hearts to you this day as we meet in worship. Help us to truly be attentive today to what you would have us hear and what you would have us learn so that we would continue to be filled to serve you. Come into our service right now, Lord. We pray this in your name. Amen. Let's join together in singing hymn 128, He Leadeth Me, O Blessed Thought. This God's hand, please. 
may be seated. We go to a new book of the Old Testament, the book of Joel, this morning. Joel chapter 2, verses 23 to 32. Joel 2, 23 to 32. Be glad, people of Zion. Rejoice in the Lord your God, for he has given you the autumn rains, because he is faithful. He sends you abundant showers, both autumn and spring rains, as before. The threshing floors will be filled with grain. The vats will overflow with new wine and oil. I will repay you for the years the locusts have eaten the great locusts and young locusts, the other locusts and the locust swarm, the great army that I sent among you. You will have plenty to eat until you are full, and you will praise the name of the Lord your God, who has worked wonders for you. Never again will my people be shamed. Then you will know that I am in Israel, that I am the Lord your God, and that there is no other. Never again will my people be shamed. And afterward, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams. Your young men will see visions. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will will pour out my spirit in those days. I will show wonders in the heavens and on earth, blood and fire, and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned into darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. For on Mount Zion and in Jerusalem there will be deliverance, as the Lord has said, even among the survivors whom the Lord calls. And then... Our New Testament or gospel lesson reading this morning, Luke 18, 9 through 14. 
to some who were confident of their own righteousness and looked down on everyone else, Jesus told this parable. Two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee stood by himself and prayed, God, I thank you that I am not like other people, robbers, evildoers, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week and give a tenth of all I get. But the tax collector stood at a distance. He would not even look up to heaven, but beat his breast and said, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. And Jesus said, I tell you that this man, rather than the other, went home justified before God. For all those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. In the book of Joel this morning, the text we are to rejoice, for God has provided the autumn rains as well as the spring rains. Now I know that we're about two inches behind this year for annual rainfall, but the end of the year is not here yet. And our text is saying that God surely provides. And the text is saying the harvest will be plentiful. There were very lean years over time, but now the harvest is great. We need to give God glory. No other God is like our God. And then in the book of Luke today, Jesus gives us the parable of the Pharisee and the tax collector. The Pharisee goes up to the temple to pray. The Pharisee prayed, God, I thank you that I am not like other people, robbers, evildoers, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I give a tenth of all I get. The tax collector stood at a distance. He would not even look up at heaven, but beat his breast and said, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. And then Jesus tells us that this man went home justified before God. And for those who exalt themselves will be humbled. And those who humble themselves will be exalted. Comparing ourselves to others is a dangerous thing to do. A phrase comes to mind. You all know that phrase. Maybe you're Mom or your dad taught you that phrase, there by the grace of God, go I. The title of my message today is Humble Us, Lord, All Our Blessings Come From You. Have you ever felt yourself as better than someone else? That's the question. Have you ever felt yourself as better than than someone else. Maybe when you go to Dollar General or Dollar Tree or Family Dollar, you say to yourself, why am I here? I'm not a Dollar General shopper. I'm better than this. I'm a Target shopper. Or if you prefer as long as you're being snobbery, a Target shopper. People, notice what Jesus said. For those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. Why do you think you are a Target shopper instead of a dollar store shopper? You've heard the expression, we all put our pants on, one leg at a time. We were all created in the image of God. We need to humble ourselves. No matter how much we have, all of our blessings, all of our blessings come from God. 
The Pharisee in our parable today has forgotten where he came from. He considers himself better than robbers, evildoers, tax collectors, adulterers. Friends, we are not better. And I've told my boys this over and over and over again. We are not better than anyone else. When I tell my three sons, don't forget you are a levy, what I mean is, do what is right. Love God, love others, be honest, integrity matters. Care about people, be kind, work hard, give a helping hand. We do not say we are better than other people. The tax collector says in our scripture, God have mercy on me, a sinner. And friends, I know we know we are all sinners, no better than anyone else. All of our blessings come from God. That's what Joel said, not ourselves. Actress and singer Demi Lovato has said, it doesn't matter where you come from or who you think you are. We are all human beings with beating hearts. We need to humble ourselves and remember that. Remember, our church, the United Methodist Church, preaches that all are welcome, all are welcome at the altar. When I give an invitation to communion, I don't say you're welcome to the altar if your net worth is over 250000 I don't say that. Everyone is welcome when the invitation comes. The two conditions are, when you take communion, that you've confessed your sins and you've made peace with your brother or sister. That's it, all. I mean, all are welcome. Whether you're a Republican or a Democrat, I know this is election season, and I tell you I, I won't take a side. Former First Lady Michelle Obama no matter who you are, no matter where you come from, you are beautiful. And I don't think it, whether we're Republican or Democrat, we can disagree with that. Red and yellow, black and white, right? They are precious in his sight. What is a humble person? I know all of you have taught your children and grandchildren to be humble. But what is a humble person? I found a list online of 20 attributes of humble people, and I think it brings us to a better understanding of both of our scriptures, Paul and Luke. All right, here we go. A humble person is not boastful of their successes. A humble person is grateful for everything in life, knowing all good gifts come from heaven above. A humble person does not belittle other people. They are not jealous of others, but wish the best for others. They are not proud, but live in an attitude of thankfulness. They are not rude. A humble person is... No matter the commercials on TV, a humble person is not vain. They are not filled with excessive self-love. They follow the belief that a good person is more important than good looks. A humble person is not materialistic. Things are not more important than others. They are not possession-focused, but applaud others for what they have accomplished. Hear that. That's so different than our world. They applaud others for what they have accomplished. They do not feel sorry for themselves. Do not worry. Life does not focus only on great or not dishonest. They live by the creed. What you see is what you get. And they put themselves in other people's shoes, trying to do the best to help another person. They are not self-righteous. You know what? 
I had to look up that term. You hear that term a lot, self-righteous. What does it mean? And maybe, maybe you're saying, Bruce, you're dumb. You should, as a pastor, know what self-righteousness is. But I had to look it up. A self-righteous person who has too much self-righteousness thinks they have better moral standards than anyone else. Did you know that? That's what a self-righteous person does. A humble person is not judgmental. They do not pass a premature or harsh or unfair opinion on others. A humble person understands that each person has their own story and life can be tough at times. A humble person takes daily life in stride, never satisfied with the th way things are, staying positive, saying I'm sorry when appropriate, helping to get things back on track as soon as they can. This is a different one. A, a humble person is never self-destructive, signs of anger and bitterness. And a humble person realizes that the best revenge is to live well, to do things better than anyone else. A humble, a humble person is never arrogant, never living with an inflated ego, a feeling of superiority, re realizing that everyone needs respect. A humble person does not dwell on the past, but helps themselves and others move forward, letting go of the past, letting go of old feelings, thoughts, and emotions. Two more. A humble person is not egotistical, not self-obsessed, realizing that they are a tiny speck in the world. They are okay with being themselves. I often found that when I was principal at the high school in Schippensburg, a kid becomes a fantastic athlete for Schippensburg, and then they move on to a bigger pond. And then they realize that they're not quite as great as they thought they were. A humble person will not get defensive or take things personally when criticized, brushing it off. A humble person focuses on what matters most, not the opinions of others. A humble person doesn't need others' approval to be happy. So I hope you'll think about what I've said this morning about humility and the different attributes I've suggested with it. Our scriptures today teach us to be humble not thinking ourselves better than others, the Pharisee better than the tax collector, and, and that we are thankful to our wonderful, benevolent God, knowing that all our blessings come from him. Let us today and every day be humble and let us be thankful. Amen. Let us join now together in our hymn of response Come Christians, join to sing in the United Methodist Hymnal 158, 158. Please rise if you are able. Come Christians, join to sing, Alleluia.
seated. You know, I did forget one announcement earlier. Uh, Mary Lou, what time are people supposed to be at the theater? The show is 11 o'clock and we're supposed to be there 45 minutes early. Okay, so if you are going to see David, David the prophet, David the king, if you are going to see David this week at Sight and Sound Theater, you need to be there at 10.15 for the 11 o'clock show. So just a reminder if you're going this week. If we look at our bulletins this morning on our prayer list, you see there the joys and concerns. We're praying for Loretta this week. Bonnie Myers, we continue to pray for. Hope, we continue to pray for. Will Brittany be moving in this week? Next weekend. This is the big time now. Okay, and that's a bit of a celebration. You know, it was one of my first weeks here that the fire occurred, and uh, it's been a long time for her, I'm sure and her family, so we celebrate that. We continue to pray for Jim's sister, Cindy, for Kayla, for Janet Murray at the, I say the county home, what's it called, uh, Laurel something? Laurel Run. Laurel Run, okay, all right. Um, uh, we continue to pray for Gary, Mel's friend, Mel, do you have any update on him? Yeah, he stopped at work this week, and he's doing really well. Good, good. Okay, okay. How old a man is he? Uh, 63. Okay, all right. Uh, Diane Hostetter and her treatments. Herb Thompson. Mary Lou, Sister Ann, and Florence Clausen. Are there others to put on our list this morning? Seems like a lot of cancer. Okay, a lot of cancer. Yeah, I, I had a good friend that passed away on Monday, or Tuesday, early Tuesday morning. Who was that? Keith Robinson, the Keith of Robinson family for sure. Okay, the Robinson family. Keith was always very active at our car show. He actually helped out a little bit. Okay. He was here. We had him this morning. Okay. So Keith Robinson. All right. And keep our sister Faith in prayer. She's having health issues. Okay. So hope, sister, faith. All right. Others this morning. Come on. Uh, Guy Peters. What? Uh, Guy, Peters. Guy Peters. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We can pray that it would be benign. Guy Peters. Others this morning? Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this morning, this new day. And we thank you for each person in, our, in your house today and their families their sons and daughters, granddaughters, grandsons, and great-grandchildren. Thank you for the legacy that St. John's has been in this community. And Lord, we continue to lift up the people here and friends and family of those who are here. We named them this morning as we went through this list and added to this list. Father God, we know that you are a loving, caring God. As your book of Joel said, you supply us with all of our blessings. So we ask you to hear our prayers this day. Speak to the needs. Let the people feel your presence this coming week. 
to feel your presence walking with them, beside them, around them. And Lord, we pray for your Holy Spirit to come upon them and to be their comfort. And right now, just for a few seconds, I would ask the congregation to quiet and pray your own personal prayers to the Lord. Father, keep us an ever-praying people. Praying without ceasing, trusting in you. And keep us humble, Lord, giving you the glory and not ourselves. So, Lord, we lift up these prayer requests to you this day. We pray it in your name. Jesus the Christ, who taught us to pray this way. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. He supplies us with rain. He supplies us with sunshine. He supplies us with the beautiful fall changing leaves. And he supplies us with all of our needed blessings. We give thanks to God. And we thank you for your gifts to St. John's Church and its mission. Let us rise now and sing the doxology as we give thanks for those blessings. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him all creatures. Let's pray together. God of the universe, you were with us at the beginning of our lives, and you will be by our side when we draw our last breath. In between, we struggle with life too, too often trying to find our way based on our own wants and desires. In our giving to you this day, may you bless us so that we might better keep our eyes focused on you, that one day we might be able to echo your servant Paul as he said, I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. We pray this in the name of Jesus, who loved us even to the cross. Amen. Let's, let's finish our service today with singing the song, Lift High the Cross.
<laughs> That's all right. Just stop right there. <laughs> Isn't that our purpose? As Christians daily, we are to be lifting high the cross. Not to boldly slam people with Jesus Christ, but to let them see us lifting high the cross in a subtle manner so that they might want that too. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you and your family peace now and forevermore. Amen. Thank you.